Hello learners, uh, myself Sudeshna Lahiri and I am from University of Calcutta Department of Education. I am associate professor over there and today we are going to discuss within the personality attitude and values. They may be two different variables and they are psychodynamic in nature. So when we talk about attitude, attitude are lasting patterns of beliefs and opinions which predispose reactions to objects, events and people. Attitude may also serve as brief composites of one's beliefs. Attitude is an enduring and general evaluation or cognitive schema relating to an object, person, group, issue or concept. Attitude is strength and balance can vary, thus an attitude can be negative or positive. And please remember, attitude are always in some kind of degrees. It is not absolute. So it may be very good, good, can't say, very poor or poor. So these are all in degrees. Attitude refer to an any subjective belief or evaluation associated with an object. Attitude is a relatively enduring organization of beliefs, feelings and behavioral tendencies towards socially significant objects, groups, events or symbols, can be viewed as evaluations of various objects that are stored in memory, referred to as our evaluations of various aspects of social world. Attitude describes it is as an enduring system of positive or negative evaluations, emotional feelings and pro or con action tendencies with respect to a social object. So learners, please remember that attitude also talks about the context from which the attitude has been built. Attitude may be quantified by using self-report measures or attitude scales such as popular Likert scale in which subjects are asked how strongly they agree or disagree on each topic. So as we discussed earlier, attitude is not one and absolute. It is in degrees and so we measure in some kind of scale which runs from extreme to other extreme. It may be bipolar which runs from very good to very poor or it may be unidirectional. Attitude formation occurs through classical conditioning, operant conditioning and modeling. So these are also following with behavioral learning theory. There are nature of attitude. So attitude are a complex combination of things we tend to call personality, beliefs, value, behavior and motivation. An attitude exists in every person's mind. It helps to define our identity, guide our actions and influence how we judge people. Please remember that attitude is again not one and whole thing. Attitude differs with person, event or any object. So a person may be having different attitude for different things or events or persons or any place. Although the feeling and belief components of attitude are internal to a person, we can view a person's attitude from his or her resulting behavior. 
attitude helps us define how we see situations as well as define how we behave toward the situation or object so it regulates our behavior as well attitude provides us the internal cognitions or beliefs and thoughts about people and object attitude causes us to behave in a particular way toward an object or person attitude can also be explicit and implicit so explicit attitudes are those that we are consciously aware of and that clearly influence our behaviors and beliefs then we are having characteristics of attitude and these characteristics are uh, the affective cognitive consistency strength balance direct experience multiplicity relations to needs so we will discuss one by one for example cognitive component cognitive components are the thoughts and beliefs about the subject the cognitive component is made up of beliefs of an individual about the object of an attitude affective component how the object person issue or even makes one feel the affective component refers to emotions aroused by the object of the attitude behavioral component how the attitude influences our behavior the behavioral component consist of a predisposition to respond in a certain way to the object of the attitude the way the attitude we have influences how we act or behave so then uh, we are having different theories also and on the basis of different theories we talk about the balance and we talk about the types as well so um we are having three uh, theories uh, balance theory cognitive dissonance theory self perception theory so balance theory proposed by fritz heider is based on the premise that people try to maintain consistency in their attitudes then proponents of reactance theory this is one more theory and that contains that attitudes are influenced by restriction on behavior to which people react the extent of reaction is related to a person's perception of the relative and for importance of the behavior so one more theory is there cognitive dissonance theory and which is developed by leon festinger states that an unpleasant physiological state often exists when two cognitions are incompatible with one another self perception theory and that is influenced by daril bem he proposes that people infer their attitude on the basis of observing their own behavior so it is always in reference to how we perceive and what is our attitude and uh, there are some functions of attitude also so what are those attitudes and the functions uh, these may be knowledge self or ego expressive adaptive ego defensive so we will discuss one by one each function the function knowledge attitudes provide meaning for life and that meaning is knowledge knowledge function refers to our need for a world which is consistent and relatively stable self or ego expressive this is one more function which says that attitude we express these may be two one help communicate who we are and second one is may make us feel good because we have asserted our identity 
adaptive. This is one more function of attitude and this says if a person holds and or expresses socially acceptable attitudes, other people will reward them with approval and social acceptance. Then there is one more function, ego defensive. The ego defensive function refers to holding attitudes that protect our self-esteem or that justify actions that make us feel guilty. And there are some more functions, experience, social factors, learning and conditioning. So they are all affecting the attitude. So we will discuss again one by one all these additional factors and functions. Experience. Attitudes form directly as a result of experience. They may emerge due to direct personal experience or they may result from observation. Social roles. This comes under the function social factors. So social roles and social norms can have a strong influence on attitudes. Social roles relate to how people are expected to behave in a particular role or context. Learning, that is classical conditioning, influences attitude toward a particular product. This attractive and appealing imagery causes to develop a positive association with this particular beverage. For example, there is operant conditioning also that can also be used to influence how attitudes develop. There are few more functions and that can make attitude change. For example, learning theory of attitude change, elaboration likelihood theory of attitude change, dissonance theory of attitude change. So learning theory of attitude change, it says, these are all attitude change which are brought by some functions. So let's discuss one by one. Learning theory of attitude change, classical conditioning, operant conditioning and observational learning that can use to bring about attitude change. And then elaboration likelihood theory of attitude change. This is also a type of attitude change and this theory of persuasion suggests that people can alter their attitudes in two ways. First, they can be motivated to listen and think about the message, thus leading to an attitude shift or they might be influenced by characteristics of the speaker leading to a temporary or surface shift in attitude. For example, from whom we are getting to know a particular incidence. Then there is one more theory which is dissonance theory of attitude change. And it is people can also change their attitude when they have conflicting beliefs about the topic. And they are in two minds. So there are some attitude measure also. How do we measure attitude? And that can be qualitative, that can be quantitative. So we will discuss one by one and how we can measure. So there are three ways. Uh, direct attitude measure, explicit attitude measure, indirect methods to measure attitude. So first we will discuss direct attitude measure. So in direct uh, attitude measure, you, uh, we are actually uh, face to face, in face to face with the uh, person whom uh, attitude we are studying. So we are using opinion surveys, interviews, sociometrics, rankings, ad adjective uh, checklists, paired comparison scales, semantic differential scales, summated rating scales, social distance scales. There is one more explicit attitude measure where a person is aware of having our uh, motive of uh, that we are measuring the attitude. So an attitude measure 
where a person is aware of having their attitude towards an object assessed. Like in a direct attitude J measure, the person uh, whom at attitude we are actually um, measuring may or may not understand that he, are, he or she is being measured or assessed. But in explicit attitude measure, the person is having the awareness. So the explicit attitude measure sees us aware of being assessed. There is one more indirect methods to measure attitudes. So indirect methods yield responses that are not taken literally. For example, physiological methods, non-obstrusive behavior Ob observations, projective techniques, disguised procedures. So these are not directly measured like it is not pen and pencil test or it is not the observation test but there are some behavior which sublimes so we are assessing those sublimed attitude through projective technique, physiological methods, non-obstrusive behavioral obs observations and disguised procedures. So we, we are having one more topic in this lecture and that is values. When we talk about values, it is not same as attitude. So this is one more psychodynamical uh, variable. So values refer to people's stable life goals reflecting what is most important to them. Values are established throughout one's life as a result of accumulating life experiences and values tend to be relatively stable. Mode of conduct or in state is personally or socially preferable. That is what is good and bad, right or wrong. Values tend to relatively stable and enduring. And we are having some more explanation of values. The values of an object or activity is, is what the object or activity is worth to a person or community. This is the economic or decision making meaning of value. In its social psychological meaning, a value is an abstract, desirable end state that people strive for or aim to uphold such as freedom, loyalty or tradition. So what are the distinction with other psycho dimensions? So there may be some distinction which makes values a value. The values may be different from attitudes, norms, beliefs, goals and needs. Values such as equality, friendship or courage may be more abstract and general they may not only are directed at specific object as attitudes are or the behavior as norms are, as state of reality as beliefs are, but values also represent very general and at times vague in states. What are the attributes of values then? Values are subjective judgments. We make a judgment of how important something is relative to something else. Values may be principles that help us make important personal decisions. These would be considered personal values. They contained when we talk about nature of values. We have discussed few minutes ago the nature of attitude. So now we are going to discuss nature of values. Nature of values. They contain a judgmental element in that they carry the individual's idea of what is right, good or desirable. Value system, a hierarchy based on a ranking of an individual's value in terms of their intensity. Values tend to relatively stable and enduring. The values may be innate, that is genetic and acquired, that is from upbringing, from the family, from the neighborhood, from the peer, from the society. Values are concepts which are belief. Values are ordered by relative importance. Then nature of values also says that values are transient, 
specific situations. Values guide selection or evaluation of behavior and events. Values are ordered by relative importance. Now what are the characteristics of values? Values provide understanding of attitudes, motivation and behavior of individuals and cultures. Values influence our perception of world around us. Values represent interpretation of right and wrong. Values imply that some behaviors or outcomes are preferred over others. There are some types of values as well and there are psychologists who uh, segregated the values with types. For example, Milton Rocky distinguished between 18 terminal values which are desirable aim states, for example, self-respect and freedom and 18 instrumental values which refer to modes of conduct, for example, helpful or forgiving. Shalom Schwartz or Walter Rayner have proposed that both instrumental and terminal values fall into a smaller and more fundamental set of value orientations such as power, achievement, tradition and profit. Individuals differ reliably in these value orientations but they are uncertainty over the particular orientations that make up for fundamental set. There are types of values which are terminal values which may be typed as desirable aim states. There are types of values as instrumental values and they are typed as modes of behavior or means towards achieving one's terminal values. So one value leading to another value. So let's just summarize in few minutes. Values refer to people's stable life goals. Values are established throughout one's life and they are the mode of conduct or aim state as personally or socially preferably. And it is distinct from other psycho dimensions. So values are not same as attitudes, norms, beliefs and goals and needs. And attitudes are also having some values like at we, we can say that attributes of values. When we are talking about attributes of values, they are values are subjective dimension and these judgments um, are depending on some other values sometimes. So it is not that it is the soul, sometimes it is very contextual and sometimes related with some other value or some other behavior. And um, it also determines some of our attributes as person um, and they are having some characteristics also in value system and value says that uh, it influences our perception of world around us and represents what is wrong and what is right. So values determine this right and wrong, how the values are framed. So um, values are also framed through nature and nurture. Nature which is through genetics and nurture through upbringing and it also getting influenced by the peer, the society, the family and the neighborhood. Thank you. And uh, we will meet again with few more topics. Thank you so much.